Hey guys, in this short video, I'm gonna show you how to visually map out your scalable content marketing machine so that you can create and repurpose and distribute content to multiple marketing channels just like Gary Vee does, but with a cost-effective team and without using all your time. So as you may or may not know, I do a lot with Airtable to organize all my content. This allows me to store and organize all my content with a unique ID. I can distribute content across multiple marketing channels very easily. But today I'm gonna to show you visually how that process actually works, step-by-step step, and how each of those different phases integrates with the tech technology that I use, which is Airtable, Zapier, Google Drive, or you could use Dropbox. So here's a high level overview of my automated content workflow. If we zoom in a bit, we're always going to start with planning so we can batch content. That's really so you can create all your content in one sitting and then you can distribute it over the next coming days or weeks. And then there's obviously the content creation process. That could be a YouTube video like this or a podcast or a live Q&A. That could be selfie style videos where you might literally look into your phone or a camera like this and give a very specific message for a place like TikTok or Instagram Reels. There really could be a lot of different ways you create content and this structure will allow you to scale that content creation out. And the way I make this scalable is to really isolate what are the inputs into these different sections and what are the outputs that are gonna go into the next section. So there's obviously a post-production process as well. I do all my organization in Google Drive, but you could just as easily use Dropbox. And as you saw, I also use Airtable. And there's a few different tools that I use in that process. And I also have an internal team and I also outsource some video editing. And then there's the Q&A process, which I use Frame.io and Google Drive and Airtable. And then there's the distribution process, which is somewhat automated and also manual. And then I'm also gathering insights and analytics, which feeds back into my planning process. So when it comes to the planning process, this is probably the most flexible area of your content marketing workflow. You know, I see a lot of people use different tools for this successfully. That could be Notion, that could be ClickUp, that could be Asana. The important thing is that you have a place to drop in your ideas easily and organize them and sort through so that you can plan out your content. The next part of the puzzle is your content creation. Conceptually, I call these content creation frameworks. Could be a video podcast, a live Q&A, a recorded event, live show, documentary. It could also just be prepared questions that are rapid fired to you where you record your responses and then you can just cut those into clips. Could just be a traditional webinar. There are some key considerations that you might want to think about in order to make this scalable and effective. And there are some important things that you need to define in order to make your process scalable through the beginning, through all the way through distribution. I actually have another video where I solely focus on the content creation framework. So in this video, I'm going to spend a bit more time on the post-production and the Q&A process, as well as distribution and analytics. The key to the content creation phase is that you just identify how and when you're going to record, and then what is the overall workflow that happens after that? Do you need to create micro content to do promotion and promote the longer form piece of content down the line? Are you going to post two days after, four days after? What is the workflow that comes after creation? And then are you recording this on 4K? Are you recording it horizontally? Are you recording it vertically? These are all the things that you want to define in your content creation process because in order for this to be scalable, you want to be able to easily add on new types of content creation into your process. The next most important part of your post-production process is being able to grab that video content as soon as it's recorded and getting it into your system, whether that's Dropbox, Google Drive, but for sure a database like Airtable. Airtable is like a spreadsheet on steroids. That's what allows me to keep all the metadata for my content, including the brand channel where it needs to be published, whether it's ready to be published and then quick access to the copy and the images and the media and even a unique ID for content or distribution. And for me, that always starts with an inbox that's in my Google Drive under the content machine. I can just drop videos in here and then all the content, whether it's an image or a video, just comes right into here. And then I can run it through a process, get it titled, tag it, and then schedule it. And then from there, I can manage the media, the status, design, copy, and any creation of long form content that needs to go into microclips. That's the process that allows the team to work together with given tools in a really efficient way. Everybody knows exactly the date that something's going to be published, the team member that's associated with that, the status. They also know what the final media should look like and any guidelines that they need in order to do the editing properly. So the key to building a scalable post-production system is number one, having them cataloged in a cloud drive with a system that's linking to all those files and keeping track of all of this metadata to facilitate a very high performing workflow. Then of course, you're going to need the tools. So in my case, I use Descript. I also use Adobe Premiere. I have an internal team and I outsource video. So some of my video production can get done in Descript when I really want to put on some extra finishing touches like the Hermosi style clipping and editing. That's where we use Adobe. And then I have an internal team that's also well versed at using Descript, but it's my outsource team that is better at using Adobe. And you can see here, it's this system that allows me to make these nuanced decisions about my post-production workflow. And that's what allows me to make this scalable. So as 
I have other team members or more outsourced people or an internal team, it's very easy for me to scale this out. And then in that post-production process, I have a really streamlined Q&A process. I'm now using Frame.io in my workflow, which syncs together with Google Drive. So my entire team can work directly in Frame.io. They don't actually have to work in Airtable or mess with Google Drive. So you can see here, it's easy to click Review Media. That's gonna open up Frame.io. I'm gonna see the video here. The editor can play it directly. When they're done, they can come up here to the status. They can say it needs review. And then I can actually watch the video. And if I need to make any changes to it, I can just make some edits. I can leave some comments and I can hit send. And when that process is done, you can obviously come back here to the status. You can put it to needs review or approved, whatever that is. And those statuses and links to all that content automatically sync back up with Airtable and also Dropbox or Google Drive. And these concepts of keeping things well organized and using the right tools and utilizing the best specialized software for the job allows me to build a scalable post-production and quality control workflow. And then as things are approved, they can go into my distribution process, which I can automate and also manually distribute. So most of the content on the left here can be automatically scheduled. There's a variety of ways of doing that automation. I can use Zapier, which is a tool that allows me to do YouTube uploads, third-party API, which is really just like a buffer or a later for developers like me. And based off of these schedule dates and the brand in the channel, I can just push that content out to social media. And then the final piece to this puzzle is insights and analytics and getting that feedback loop so that back up here in my planning session, I can get better and better every week. So I've actually added in analytics directly into my system here. I can pull in analytics from TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube. I can pull analytics in from other places that I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm always just showing you guys the latest and greatest where I'm at right now. So if this video is a few weeks old or even a month old, I've gone a lot further from here. But since I keep track of where everything was posted, I can actually cross analyze the analytics of a single post on multiple platforms. So I can see how a video performed on TikTok versus Instagram Reels versus YouTube Shorts, which gives me an inside advantage to know what type of content performed on any given channel. Because as we know, the same content doesn't always perform well on one platform versus another. So there you go. There's an inside look at my automated content workflow from planning to creation to post-production to Q&A to distribution and also analytics. So as always, if you found this video valuable, make sure to like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot and it tells me what type of content you want next. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.